Good evening, one and all, and welcome to the Hive London for tonight's Vanarama National League fixture as the Bees host Maidenhead United with the Bee Army in attendance for the first time since December. Coming up on our Live from the Hive pre-match show, we catch up with midfielder Sam Skeffington to find out about his time at the club since he joined on loan from Millwall. We sit down with the head of the Hive Foundation, Daniel Martin, to find out what's been going on in the club's charitable arm. There's highlights from Saturday's eventful two-all draw with Torquay United, and we look back at the last time Maidenhead United made the trip to North London. There's plenty to come, so sit back, relax, and get in the mood for this evening's match. Saturday saw the return of striker Josh Walker to the Barnet team. He came on for the last 15 minutes away at Torquay United. Josh coincidentally hit the winner the last time Maidenhead United made the trip to the Hive London. Let's remind ourselves with the highlights. Ahead of this evening's fixture, we sat down with the head of the Hive Foundation, Daniel Martin, to talk all things community. Dan, thanks for joining us on Live from the Hive. What an immensely busy year it's been for the Hive Foundation. Just tell us a bit about what you've been up to. Um, essentially, looking to see how we can involve the community and bring them into the football club. You know, we've been here at this site for going on just over 10 years and we're nowhere near as immersed into the community as we should be so we're looking at various different ways and means of how we can attract more fans or should be fans and will be fans into our football stadium. Away from the football side obviously that is going to be a big focus to get more fans into the Hive London. Away from that during the pandemic We've supported many different things. Just tell us a bit about that. And of course, we've had the COVID vaccination site here. Yeah, I mean, no one ever would have thought it was going to be as you know, horrendous as it was. Um, we had the NHS come in and we were one of the inaugural sites to open in the UK to the NHS, which was fantastic. I mean, you know, these guys are absolute heroes and it was a pleasure to welcome them in. Um, we were the first football club to do that and I think a few other football clubs jumped on board afterwards. 
So they were here from just before Christmas to end of April and they vaccinated just over 55,000 people, which is unbelievable. I mean, you know, in terms of doing something for your local community, you know, it doesn't get more real than that. So, yeah, that was the NHS side of things. Um, in terms of other community activities that we've been doing here, you know, everything sort of jumped on us really, really quickly. We weren't expecting it to be, you know, we're shutting, that's it, can't do anything. So how can we actually be of value? Um, and all credit to the chairman, it was just one of the first things he jumped on and said, you know, we want to help people. How can we help the community? And we put a load of time and effort into a, uh, into a food hub, um, actually let's do it in partnership with a big UK charity um, and roll it out across all the National League football clubs. So we did a pilot scheme with, um, tried to do five other clubs, ended up just being three of us, but we still managed to help, I think it was about 650 families um, in and around our collective stadium. So, you know, as much as it was a two week pilot that <clears throat> didn't really grow much further um, as an initial effort, you know, it was just fantastic to see everyone jumping on board. I remember seeing pictures of the walking football team bringing their stuff down to, to the food hub last spring and last summer. I couldn't do a community interview without mentioning them. They do some truly remarkable work on and off the, uh, off the pitch. I mean, <laughs> they're, they're just the most amazing brand ambassadors for the club. They are here every day. They do so much. They are always trying to help. Um, I mean, they do help. They, they raise money. They have their own evenings, you know, quiz nights, and they're always doing something. They always want to support the club. So, yeah, I mean, as soon as they found out that we had a food hub here, they were, you know, lots of different shopping bags coming down and just stacking the shelves of it. And, yeah, amazing, amazing to have people like that around you and actually really helpful. And, and we're doing a, a big initiative, which we start next season, um, which will involve the walking football team quite a lot. I mean, there's loads of them. There's, you know, we have a, I, I think, and if I'm, if I'm not wrong, we've got, I think we've got the biggest walking football team in the UK um, in terms of numbers. And they turn up twice a week. I think they might need a third session. They get about 80, 90 people playing, which is amazing. Um, we're doing a community schools program next season, which will essentially see us taking a load of our players into schools um, and then in return the schools will be sending their kids into the stadium. Um, so we want to be able to put our players in front of children so that they can actually get some benefit from that and build that affiliation with the club. Um, and walking football team are going to be a big part of that because they are our brand ambassadors who will be going with the players into the schools. So. It's always been a concern, I guess, whenever I've spoken to Barnet fans at the Hive or whether that's been online, that the fan base obviously has dwindled a little bit. We have a, quite an older fan base. We've got to really try and push to get A, the next generation of, of local community schools in here and then students to try and grow that fan base further and try and pack out the Hive, which in turn benefits the whole football club. Absolutely. And, you know, it's been going for quite a long time now, these little initiatives which bring schools into the club. And I think it's all about consistency, continuity, not doing something once and trying it, oh, it didn't quite work, all right, let's not do it again, let's try and do it differently. But actually, it's about doing something, planning really, really well, um, making sure that everyone is very, you know, they're, they're, they know everything that's going to happen well in advance of you spring it on them. Um, so we're planning for the whole season ahead in terms of our initiatives with the schools. And we, you know, we've been doing that for the last few months. Um, and you know, it's something that we will build over time. You, know, you, don't, you don't become a Barnet fan um, overnight. Um, but over time, you build an affinity. You know, this is an amazing setup here. Um, and there's certainly from a lot of the, the people that I speak to, you know, Barnet is either their first team or it's their second team. Um, and if it's their first team, it's, you know, they've been fans for years and years and years. Um, and then it's their kids and their grandkids that end up being the next generation of fans. Um, and if it's their second team, you know, it's because they support a Tottenham or an Arsenal. Um, but they will come to games. So actually what we're looking to do, we're looking to start a new type of fan uh, in, in kids from local schools. And we bring them in and we show them a great time. Um, and we get them immersed in the football club. And over time, um, we want to build them 
into that, you know, next set of bums on seats for the future of the club. Last question from me, we're finishing the season with the B Army back in the stands. What a great way to finish the year in terms of because of the pandemic and the lockdown. It's not been a great season for the football club, but nice to try and finish on a high with, with the fans hopefully behind us. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's been horrendous for the fans. Um, on the pitch, it's not been the best season. However, you know, you're starting to see some of the players now really, you know, pushing forward that feeling of pride and wearing the badge. Um, and they're all excited about the fans coming back into the stadium. You know, the, we had them in a couple of times in that little gap um, last year. But, you know, it's not the same. Welcoming them back is, is fantastic. We're very, very excited to have them back. Um, and, you know, hopefully this will be just a taste of what we're going to have coming up next season. We're looking to fill the stadium get everyone happy again, get them shouting and chanting and all the old sort of stuff that we should be doing at this great football club. Simon Bassey's bees headed to Devon on Saturday, knowing they could have a huge impact in the Vanarama National League title race. They took a commendable point from Torquay United and here's how all the action unfolded.
Midfielder Sam Skevington made his Barnet debut in the reverse fixture at York Road and has impressed since coming in on loan from Millwall. We caught up with him ahead of this evening's match with the Magpies. Sam, thanks for joining us on Live from the Hive. You've been here for a little while now. Just talk to us about your experience here and how much you're enjoying it. Yeah, as, um, as you know, it's my first taste of men's football. Um, I think it's good coming into Barnet. They looked after me well. Gaffer, new Gaffer coming at the same time, looked after me well. But yeah, I've really enjoyed it so far. There's big differences, everyone always seems to say, between yeah. 23s and men's football. You got chucked right in the, at the deep end in that very scrappy game down yeah. at Maidenhead. How much have you enjoyed it? And talk to us about the differences between 23s and men's football, particularly in the National League, very physical league. Yeah. Well, as you say, it's, it's very physical, much more physical, bigger players, faster tempo. It's just learning to deal with it, you know, it's, it's, it's good experience. I've enjoyed it so far. I'm hopefully looking to stay next season, do the same sort of men's football next season. You came in with Sam Bid, you seem to have been getting, yeah. on, getting on really well with him. How nice was it to have someone else to yeah. settle in with? Yeah, it was good, you know, um, both on loan, both new. So it was, it was good, you know, you settle in together doing everything together sort of thing, so it was good. Simon's been impressed with your performance, he's spoken highly of you. What's it like working with him? Because he's certainly turned things around yeah, for, for the club as a whole in the last six, seven weeks. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely turned things around. Um, he's been good with all the boys, me and me, coming in the same time as him, me and Beardy. He knows what he wants out of the team, um, good with all the analysis stuff, knows what we need to work on. You know, he pulls us to the side and talks to us. He definitely knows what he wants, so I think he's good. He's done well so far. When you look at the performances, there's not been too many times where we've been well beaten. Even that Eastley no. game, we lose 3-0. It could have been a very different afternoon. The boys seem to be working really hard for one another. Yeah. I mean, since, since I've come in, there's, I wouldn't say there's been one game where I feel like we're going into it the weaker side. You know, we've always held our own and some games are obviously tougher than others and some games we might not be at our best but I definitely feel like there's teams where they're not better than us and they might have nicked a result. Looking at Sato's game with Torquay, that was one of the, the club's best performances of the season. We probably can't say I was unlucky not to have won that one. Yeah, I mean I watched it back and I think I think we had probably double the amount of chances. Mm. Um, it's just learning to take them, you know, like, as a team, you know, he's Good getting a draw away from home, nicking a point against one of the best teams in the league. But you know, when you look back at it, you want to be getting three points. You deserve three points, I think. An assist for yourself for, yeah. for Femis's header. You gave him so many opportunities yeah, to get on the yeah. score sheet. We, we got there eventually. Yeah, I mean, the gaffer rung me up Friday night. It's put me on set pieces because obviously Alex has been out. Um, but yeah, I mean, just to contribute with an assist to get the team back on level. All uh, credit due to Femis, though, is a great header. You got the man of the match as well. I yeah. saw plenty of nice messages from the fans, but yeah. it must have topped off what was a good week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, unbelievable, you know. Couldn't, couldn't, couldn't ask any more. Going into this week, two home games. Obviously, yeah. Sutton have, have won the league now and Maidenhead yeah, tomorrow course. night. But fans in the ground. Firstly, it must be really enjoyable to play in front of a partisan yeah, home yeah. support against Torquay and now against in front of our fans. The last two. Yeah, it'd be good, definitely good to be witness to the uh, home fans. You know, I think as a as a club, we owe them a good couple of performances. You know, show a bit of character last couple of games. And that must be the message now that we try and finish on a high. Of course, it's been a, a disappointing season for the club, but if we can yeah. finish on two wins going through the summer with uh, yeah. plenty of ambition. Yeah, definitely, definitely have to uh, give the fans a good couple of games. Hundred percent. For the penultimate time here on Live from the Hive, it's now time to get into the action. Whether you're coming to back the bees in person at the Hive London this evening, or you're watching our stream from home, enjoy the game. And for those watching from home, I'll hand over to our commentary team of Aaron Pullen and myself, Adam Rowe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 